Good evening and warm welcome to State of Business Art TV's Prime Time News Bulletin with me Rukshi Pandit Ratna. Let's take a look at the headlines first. State Minister of Finance urges the government on the increase of revenues and Vijay Das Rajapaksha to be released from his ministerial portfolio. And today on Top Story, State Minister of Finance Iran Vikramaratna stressed the government's need to increase revenues and to employ fit and proper candidates in state-owned enterprises. The minister expressed his views addressing the CEO Network Forum in Colombo today under the theme of economic challenges ahead. As Sri Lanka's per capita income passed the magic number US dollars 2000 and we moved from a low income country to a middle income country, we've had to forego the concessionary borrowings that we had got for many, many decades. We also inherited an economy in which, apart from the budget deficit, an economy in which our revenues had declined drastically. Given the present per capita levels, our revenue to GDP should be closer to 20%, while it had actually declined in 2014 when we took the reins of government to 11.6% of GDP. It is today 14.5% of GDP. The Indian Revenue Bill is a major component in simplifying the complex tax structure and, and it will also facilitate compliance with the goals that the government has set. That the fundamental issue is that you need to have the right people in the right job. We're trying to bring a public enterprise law. You know about the Kazana model in Malaysia or the Temasek model in Singapore. We have basically been looking at that, talking with those people. We have kind of crafted a draft of a public enterprise law and trying to bring state enterprise, own enterprises under this law. One of the fundamental things, I think, is to, to in ensuring that the right people are there, is to have a process in which fit and proper people could be approved. I wouldn't say what I have just articulated has completely been accepted yet by government, but I'm making you aware of it because I think that this is fundamental if we are going to reform state-owned enterprises. It does not take away the power from politicians to nominate because they can re-nominate. But the person has to be fit and proper. And I think that that's, we have to go in that direction. Consultant to the Ministry of Finance, Deshal Dimel, further articulated on the Finance Ministry-led Inland Revenue Bill and other efficiency initiatives. One of the key objectives of the IR bill is to increase its level of simplicity so that you can improve compliance. So what you're seeing is shifting away from uh, very complex and subjective uh, provisions into more simple, objective, easily understandable provisions. Historically, we've had so many different exemptions in uh, at so many different levels. It's difficult even for the tax officials or the, and the taxpayers to actually know which, which uh, rate they would fall into. There are very many, many different ways of finding ways to get into a lower tax paying bracket. So here again, the principle is to have have no exemptions, as few differentials as possible, thereby again make it uh, much easier to get more people in, into the uh, tax base and removing discretion. We're looking at introducing e-procurement into the government process. That will A, increase the transparency of the process, reduce uh, opportunities for graft uh, and increase the efficiencies, uh, and also again be able to ensure that you're always you're spending money in, in the most e efficient and cost-effective manner. This will work across the board in terms of all government expenditure going forward, both on the big ticket items and on the small ticket as well. So that is one of the areas, the ways that we can use technology to uh, basically to be more lean and to be more efficient in the way that we uh, we spend money. Treasury itself, we are looking at introducing uh, treasury management information systems. It miss that is one thing that's going to enable the, the treasury centrally to, to be able to track the efficiency of expenditure of the big ticket item. In terms of specifically addressing some of the key issues with regard to constraints to the investment climate, areas like. Uh, access to land, access to electricity, access to finance. Uh, there are 10, uh, 10 subcommittees that have been appointed by the PM that are looking at uh, that clearly identifying these and addressing in a very quick manner. In th with those two aspects, we expect the FDI to start uh, to unleash the, the bottlenecks that we've had thus far and hopefully in the next couple of years. The entire speech can be viewed exclusively on our television this Sunday at 8 p.m. The Working Committee of the United National Party today informed President Maithripala Sirisena to take steps to remove the Minister of Justice Vijayadasa Rajapaksha from his ministerial portfolio. 
The decision was taken following the Minister of Justice non-compliance with demands made by the Working Committee with regards to criticism of government policies. The General Secretary of the UNP, Minister Kabir Hashim, said that Minister Rajapaksha was allowed to dismiss the accusation but failed to do so when the grace period elapsed yesterday. Let's take a look at more news after this break. Welcome back. The March 12 movement today urged authorities to commence local government elections with immediate effect. The movement requests political parties to submit nominations for suitable candidates and to retain transparency throughout the upcoming election process. The March 12 movement is a voluntary public movement comprising of various government and non-government organizations and institutions. It was initiated to foster a clean political culture in Sri Lanka. The one of the main point that we are we, we, we want to declare, uh, we want to elaborate that we are not happy with the present situation in the country with regard to the elections. And we urge, we pressurize the government to have a sooner elections, local elections as well as the provincial elections. And also we wish to, as March 12 movement, we wish to request all the political parties to declare their criteria for how they are going to select their uh, local government candidate for the upcoming local elections. We know all the political parties has agreed and signed the March 12 declaration in 2015. And this upcoming local elections, there's no preferential voting for the voters. Voters doesn't have choice to select, doesn't have a chance to select their representative. The whole, the whole responsibility goes with the political party. Hetia Rachi also voiced concerns on female candidate representation in the upcoming elections. We are really concerned about the women's quota for the upcoming local elections. We have noted that the, the, the local government act has uh, uh, arrange the separate 25% quota for women and also now they are uh, again they are discussing change in the electoral system uh, the, now we, we th there is a little doubt on it whether they are going to uh, decrease the women's quota uh, from 25 to uh, uh, less than somewhere in less than 25% uh, so we as a march 12 movement uh, we uh, we really urge the government, we really urge the, uh, the relevant ministry, and we really urge the, the parliament, parliament that do, don't touch with the women's quota for the upcoming uh, local elections. Let's take a look at stocks after this break. Welcome back. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped by 25.21 points to close the session at 6,395.32, and the S&P SL20 Index dropped by 20.92 points to close the session at 3,678.07. Turnover was 419.4 million rupees and 17.3 million shares were traded. Let's take a look at today's forex rates. Thank you for watching State of Business. See you tomorrow at the same time. Till then, take care. Good night.